Hey guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. So as you guys can see today's video is going to be a, another like wrap up video. I love all the wrap up videos at the start of the year so I tend to do quite a lot of them. And as you guys can see this is all of the books that I read in 2023. So I had a goal to read 50 books in 2023. And I managed to read 55, which I am really thankful for. At the start of the year, I did a video about like the 23 books that I wanted to read in 2023. So out of that list, I managed to read 17 of them, which I feel like is still a pretty good amount. Some of them I don't physically have anymore because I may not have loved them. And obviously I do have some here as well. So I have the stack behind me. I have this little stack, which I used in my thumbnail. And then I also have this massive stack here as well, which we will briefly go over. So I'm honestly really surprised that I managed to read this much, but I am really excited for the new year and all of the reading that I will be able to do in the new year. I definitely read some good books in 2023 and I definitely read some terrible books. If you want to know some stats then I have quickly worked out some stats which I will let you guys know. So I read 25 romance so that's like pretty much half, almost half. I read two dystopian slash sci-fi which I'm actually genuinely quite surprised at because I do tend to read a lot more dystopian and sci-fi. I read two general fiction, six fantasy, four mystery, six Christian non-fiction, five thriller and four non-fiction so quite a good range of different books so I did do a video halfway through 2023 where I did like a mid-year reading wrap up so I'm not going to talk about those books in depth that I read then but I thought I'd just give you guys a bit of an overview and then if you want to know any specifics on those books then make sure you go and watch that video as well otherwise this video would just be ridiculously long so yeah if you want to know what books I read in 2023 then just keep watching. So I'm gonna do the books in order from like what I read at the beginning of the year right through to what I read at the end of the year and from books 1 to 23 are books that I had talked about in my mid-year reading wrap-up so let's quick fire through those. The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. It's Not Summer Without You by Jenny Han which is the second book in the Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy. You'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han which is the last book in the Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy. Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. Addicted to You by Krista and Becca Ritchie. The Loop by Ben Oliver. The People We Keep by Alison Larkin. My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Hunted by Megan Spooner. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Forever by Judy Bloom. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. The Bookshare by Federa Patrick. The Yearbook Committee by Sarah Ayub. Akatar by Sarah J Maas, the first book in the Akatar series. A Place of Quiet Rest by Nancy Lee DeMoss. If I Were God I'd End All the Pain by John Dixon. Glow by Amy Kathleen Ryan. It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. Postgrad by Emily Cassell. Verity by Colleen Hoover. And No Funny Business by Amanda Escal. Alright, so now we move into the new books that I have not talked to you guys about. Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. This book is not for everyone. Um, it does have a big miscommunication trope in it. It has toxic relationships, but somehow it just works. I loved all of the characters. So this one here, I'm pretty sure is a dual POV with Magnolia Parks and BJ Ballantyne. This is kind of very much like Gossip Girl in a book, like very Chuck and Blair. They come from like very rich families so it's a lot of like rich people drama which I absolutely love and I just flew through this. They are quite chunky books. I also love the cover. Um, these covers are the old covers and the artist that designed these covers were her debut covers. It is set in London so rather than like Gossip Girl being set in New York this is kind of like Gossip Girl but set in London. I enjoyed this. This is the first book in a series so you have Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates. Magnolia Parks has three books with the third book coming out this year and Daisy Hates has two books so far but her 
story is still ongoing I believe. The next book that I read is The 1000 Year Old Boy by Ross Welford. Now this book I did enjoy but I just didn't feel like I needed it on my shelf anymore. So this one is classified as a paranormal fiction and it is YA. I said that I enjoyed this, that it was written well but I just wish it had characters names at the top of chapters as it was told from a dual point of view. So I feel like it was a little bit jumpy with trying to work out who was speaking. I enjoyed the side characters and the main characters. I do feel like the conflict was resolved too quickly and that's also part of why I decided not to keep the book as well. I said that it had short chapters and that I read it quickly and then I said that I didn't keep as think I have better books and is a bit young for me. Think I would have kept it if I was around 12. Um, again this is YA. It was written well with thoughts and dialogue like in terms of the 1000 year old boy. Also if affected his physical age as well and I just said I think it was a tad too long as over 400 pages. I am really happy that I read it though because it is a book that I had owned on my shelf for a very very long time. Next up I read Marriage That Works by Chip Ingram. Now this one is a Christian non-fiction book which just talks about marriage. I would recommend reading this if you are already married otherwise you probably wouldn't get as much out of it as you would if you were reading this when you were married. I also would recommend this for new couples who have been married for a short amount of time. If you've been married for a while and you just want a refresher then I think this would be a good one. I did really enjoy this. Um, Phil and I were reading this together. So Phil and I always have a Christian non-fiction book that we are reading together and I did think there was a lot of wisdom in this. Um, Chip Ingram is a pastor I'm pretty sure. Yeah this was one that we got recommended by our pastors and elders back home in Hawke's Bay as well. Next up I read The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So this is book two in the Inheritance Games trilogy. Obviously I can't really say too much about what happened in this book but I did really enjoy it. Um, there were more questions that got answered and um, definitely left it open for the third book as well. Um, I just love the Inheritance Games as a whole. I think it is a really good trilogy. Really good if you're in a reading slump or you feel like you're not a big reader or you don't have time to read I would suggest that you read this. It is a YA mystery series so really easy to read. Jennifer Lynn Barnes writes with very short chapters it's very bingeable, you just want to keep reading and I really love that about her writing. Would I say it's my favourite book in the trilogy? No, I think my favourite book is still the first one. The next book that I read is Trapped by, I think it's Michael Northrop. This is a YA thriller. I binged about half of this in one sitting. I didn't keep it obviously um, but I will give you guys my thoughts. So I wrote down that it is a YA suspense novel and it was following kids who were stuck in high school during a blizzard. There was a group of seven of them and it was a mixed bunch of kids. So kids from different upbringings, different home lives, different like parts of the school as well, like different academic areas and things like that. The main reason that I didn't keep it was because of this, that I felt like most of the conflicts were written on the back of the book. So I was a little gutted about that and kind of wanted more and obviously it was a bit repetitive. It was nothing new. You could read the back of the book and get the entire plot. Overall was an okay book great to read in winter as there was so much snow and I did read this in winter time and I said that I read it very quick in over two days. It was very bingeable to read but I was just disappointed that the entire plot was on the back. And then I said that I, f I felt like it was a little young and wished that I'd read it when I was 16 or 17 just that the language that was used and the thoughts of the characters were a bit young. After that book I really just wanted something that I knew that I was going to love so I read The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and One Hawthorne Night which is the short story in the back of this book which relates to this Final Gambit book by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. These next few books like the next four if you include the little short story which I do I include it as one. I read in a reading vlog from last year so I will leave that down below and in the eye if my cards are working. Sometimes they are sometimes they aren't but again loved this. I thought this was a really great wrap up to the trilogy. 
I was really glad about the decision that Avery, who is our main character, made at the end of the story. I think it fit really well with her character and it was kind of what I was hoping that she would do. I feel like all the loose ends were tied up as well and I enjoyed the little short story at the back. It was just really nice to have that little bit of extra information and time spent with the characters. Next up I read another Christian non-fiction book. So this one is If I Were God I'd Make Myself Clearer, Searching for Clarity in a World Full of Claims by John Dixon. This is a super duper short book. This is in the same series as If I Were God I'd End All the Pain, which obviously I talked about in my previous wrap up video. This one is basically just how to understand God in the world that we live in and why he doesn't seem to make himself clear, why in the Bible he speaks in like metaphors and parables and things like that. Um, again it was a really short read. Phil and I were reading this together and there's only like 79 pages. It is one of those books where I feel like you could just sit and binge it and you wouldn't have to like pick it up and put it down. I did really enjoy this and I think this is a great one that will be able to lend out to people as well if they just want to understand God a little bit more. Then the next book that I read after that one was Out of the Ice by Ann Turner. This one is an adult thriller book. It's technically like a psychological thriller but I've just lumped in thriller as a whole and haven't really looked at like subcategories. I didn't keep this book and I will let you guys know my thoughts as to why. Again I talked about this in my reading vlog so if you've seen that you'll be able to see me through the whole experience of reading this book. I enjoyed the setting of it being set in Antarctica and enjoyed learning about the wildlife. It's definitely made me want to read more books set in Antarctica because I loved any time that it talked about the wildlife or like all of the ice and the peacefulness of being in Antarctica. I said that the story struggled to keep my focus though. I feel like anytime it wasn't talking about the wildlife and the setting, I was getting distracted. And I feel like everything that happened was on the back of the book. So like all the conflicts, the entire plot was all on the back of the book. So you could have read the back of the book and claimed that you'd read the book. I said that the ending was the only other good part apart from the like setting aspect of it. The suspenseful scenes didn't seem that suspenseful. Obviously it is a psychological thriller so it is a little bit different to a normal thriller but I think just the way that they were describing things and setting things up and setting like the scenes and stuff up I just expected a little bit more. And I said that the adult main character was likeable but that her friend was whiny at times and I remember just really being annoyed by her friend as well and her friend just wasn't acting like an adult either. I just feel like I wouldn't recommend it over like some other books on my shelf. Next up I have a, another Christian non-fiction. So this one is Enjoying God by R.C. Sproul. Finding hope in the attributes of God. I did really enjoy this book. I definitely think this will be one that I come back to and read as well. But it just was talking about God and his character and like the claims of the Bible and also just like the bigness of God. Um, if that makes sense, and just how we can trust him, have hope in him, um, and I did really enjoy this. R.C. Sproul is a pastor as well. And then I read Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. I think I read this in like the latter half of winter or maybe beginning of spring. I really enjoyed this book. This one is a sports romance. So the girl is a figure skater who is competing. The guy is an ice hockey player and I'm not really a sporty kind of gal but I really enjoyed reading about this sports romance. This is also a reverse grumpy sunshine so the girl is grumpy and the guy is a golden retriever. Um, the guy's name is Nate and the girl's name is Stasi and I loved their characters. There was a lot of character development in this book as well. I loved the friend groups as well. Like I think Hannah Grace just really knows how to write friend groups well. This one is also the first book in the Maple Hills series. I have the second book which is called Wildfire which I do want to read very soon because it's set at a summer camp. And then we do have the third book called Daydream coming out in June which I'm really excited about because one of my favourite characters 
characters in this book is Henry and Henry is the main character in Daydream so Daydream is Henry's book which I'm really excited about. It was really good like there was a plot alongside the romance as well which I really enjoyed and the ending was really good. One thing I will say about this is that it is quite spicy and if you're not used to reading spice it might be a lot to take in. It was a lot for me to take in and at one point I almost was like I don't know if I can read about this but then as I kept reading the spice scenes seemed to get less and less which I really enjoyed. It is a bit of a longer book for a romance book. It is over 400 pages but I really did enjoy this. Alright I apologize if I'm in a slightly different position. I just changed over my battery because it was dying. And then the last book that I have on the ground on like my little stash on the ground is this one here. So this one is A Walk to Remember by Nicholas Sparks. You're following this guy and he is quite like a popular guy at the school and then he ends up having to be in a situation where he has to kind of spend a lot of time with this one girl in school that is kind of like an outcast almost. She is also a Christian um, which I really enjoyed reading about like the scenes with her. She is just the most wholesome person ever. You kind of like watch their friendship grow and blossom um, as well as you learn about something that is going on with this Christian girl which makes her different to everybody else. I did really enjoy this. Um, it wasn't anything too crazy but I just thought it was written very very well and I really liked the Christian influence in this book. I thought it was done really well. Um, this book is also under 200 pages so it's a really short quick and easy read. Alright now we jump to the stack behind me. So after that very light-hearted romance I was in the mood to pick up a fantasy so I decided to go into the second book in the Akhtar series which is Akamath or A Court of Mist and Fury. I do think I left it too long between reading Akhtar and reading this. Felt like I remembered Akhtar but then I feel like I may have missed some of the small things because I left it too long and this one is my favourite book so far in the series. The settings in this book, we get more of our main character, like our male main character in this book as well. The ending had me like, because like the book was about to end and then something big happened and I was like, what? Sorry? Like we have like two pages left, like how's this book gonna finish? But then the way that it ended, it like made so much sense and it kind of like wrapped everything but it still left it open for the third book. And I love Sarah J Maas's writing, the way she describes things, the way her brain works. It's a very easy fantasy series to read if you're not a fantasy reader like myself I'm definitely not a fantasy reader. Um, my husband is more of a fantasy reader in our household. Akatar is a really easy one to understand. There's not too many politics in this book it's mainly just more like romance focused. There's like a little bit of politics but nowhere near as many as the third book. This was the longest book that I read this year. Just over 620 pages so she is a chunky one but I can see why this is a lot of people's favourite because it was also my favourite as well. We also met a lot of new characters as well in this book and I love all of the side characters as well. Then I wanted to read something a little bit more light-hearted and I read Lucy in the Sky by Paige Toon. This one is a YA romance book and I didn't keep it obviously. I have a lot of thoughts with this one. I was just really disappointed in this book. So I said that I wasn't even two pages and stuff was going wrong and it feels like we don't even know our main character well yet. It felt like she was trying to rush into getting the story going rather than setting it up first and then having things go wrong. So I feel like I also couldn't really sympathize with the main character because we just don't know her that well yet. I said that she thinks her boyfriend is cheating on her. It's not confirmed but then she starts writing him off and going after another guy which seems very hypocritical. The main character was not likeable, calls people names by like page five and is mean. She basically just assumed something and went with that as fact. It really annoyed me because I'm like you haven't even had a conversation with your partner about the fact that you think that they're cheating on you. And it also felt like the author was trying to add in more drama than was necessary 
and if, if I can't like the main character and I can't root for them, I don't really care much about the story. I said that it was a summer read. I think I read this in like late spring. I said that the wedding is a big part of the story but happens halfway through the book. Less than 200 pages in and it is a 387 page book. Felt that the rest was just unnecessary drama. A lot of big scenes just had two lines about it. So on the back of the book it's describing um, this girl who is, she's like a successful person like got her own life and all that kind of stuff but she's flying home to a wedding where her best friend is marrying her high school crush um, and so it like seems like this whole thing is revolving around this wedding but this wedding happened before the first 200 pages of the book I said that it has jokes throughout it and it's so cheesy and I hate it and I said that the jokes aren't funny either I remember that it was really just not great. When I was reading it, I said that the boyfriend is a bit of a dick as they never want to spend time together and he never invites her out or he just hangs at home. <laughs> I literally just wrote, I just don't care. This is where like normally like I would be tempted to DNF it and I was tempted to DNF it but it was on my 23 books to read in 2023 so I just really wanted to get through it. I said that it was written YA but it reads very young and it was like a chick lit novel and it was also this author's debut novel. I said that her mum and friends call her out for cheating and she just ignores it or convinces herself she's not when she clearly is. There was a cheating trope from like the main character and I said that she was complaining about a two-year age gap in a relationship and I said like get over it it's not that much. It wasn't at an age where like she was in high school and he was in college like they were both out of high school and working. Like some of my friends who have got married have five years between them and their husband. One of my friends is 10 years younger than her husband. And then I just said that it was not believable and no character development. All of the non-fiction books and the Christian books I was like reading alongside of these other like fiction books. But after that I went and binged the rest of Love Stories by Trent Dalton. I really enjoyed this book. Basically this book is Trent Dalton sitting on a busy Brisbane street, like a main street, and just asking people about their love stories. Um, there is a little trigger warning at the start of this book because it does deal with with some heavy topics and it's like relationship, friendship stories, um, like kind of like finding yourself stories and I just thought it was so wholesome and so sweet and just such a breath of fresh air knowing that these like real people was pretty like overwhelming but in like the best way possible and this was quite good because again very short chapters. I would just read maybe like a couple of these at night before I went to bed and it just put me like in the best mood. Like I had really really good sleep. After that I picked up Ricochet by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is the second book in the Addicted to You slash Callaway Sister series. So this is a 10 book series where it has the Addicted series and the Callaway Sister series. You can read them separately but you are recommended to read them together. This book it wasn't my favourite. I did enjoy the first book more. I also feel like I was kind of slumpy when I was reading this because I read this after Lucy in the Sky so I feel like may I, I may have liked it more if I was reading it when I wasn't as slumpy. But in this book you just got Lily as she was trying to overcome her sex addiction and I think I honestly just preferred having Lily and Lo. I did enjoy this one like you did learn a lot more about like her family and her siblings and things like that and I did enjoy it but I just didn't enjoy it as much as the first one so I am excited to go into the third book where we have Lily and Lo again. Again this was a really short quick and easy read. With this series there's not as much plot it's mainly more like a character development series and more of like a hanging out with these characters and they also both come from really rich families and the first I think the first three books are Lily and Lo and then as you get through the series you do get like the other sisters books and their like partners because I think there's like four Callaway sisters so they each get like different books and things like that. Next up I wanted to dive back into one of my favourite fantasy or kind of like urban fantasy series and that is the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. So this one here is book four. So this is The Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. Obviously I can't really say too much about what happens in this book. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is kind of like a series where it has like a world that is taking place alongside like the main world and basically you're following Jacob who is the main character and like I think there's about 10 other 
characters that become main characters which are the peculiar children and Jacob's grandfather dies and basically sends him on a quest to find the lady in the loop because his grandfather was like involved in this world and had like special powers and things like that um, and so Jacob goes in search of this world to try and get answers as to what happened to his grandfather because he died in like a really weird way and he finds this world and then they go on like all these adventures and stuff like that and it's just so wholesome and one of the things that I love about this series is that it has little Polaroids in the book which help to tell the story and all of these Polaroids are 100% authentic like they are real photographs and Ransom Riggs has crafted these stories around the photographs and I really love that no matter who you are reading this series I feel like everyone has the exact same picture of what is going on in the series and like we are all viewing things the same and that never ever happens in books but this is a series where I feel like I don't like to leave the books too long either just because there is so much that happens and I don't want to like lose like the thoughts and like lose what is actually going on um so I was so excited to delve back into this one this again is a bit more of a chunkier book but I did read it really really fast. These books here in particular are really really easy to binge. Then next up I read The Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Riggs. This one is like a little novella book and I wasn't too sure where to slot this in. I tried to google it but google didn't tell me and I kind of wished that I had read it either between book one and book two or between either book two and book three or between th book three and book four because I think in book three this gets destroyed because this is like a book that they use to like help guide them and give them wisdom and stuff for like kind of like the history of like peculiardom. So like the stories in this are just really weird but as long as you have like a good imagination and understand the world of Miss Peregrine's peculiar children then you'll be fine to read this. I don't think you would want to start with this um, because it'll be way too confusing. The next book that I read is The Notebook by Nicholas Spock. Sparks. I didn't keep this because I just felt like I didn't necessarily need it. You're following the relationship of a guy and a girl and it's kind of like a bit of like a past and present situation um, because the the woman is in a nursing home and she has dementia and she can't really remember the story of falling in love with her husband and her husband is also in this aged care facility and he basically just reminds her every day of their love story which I think is really really sweet but I just feel like the book again Nicholas Sparks doesn't really go into too much detail when he describes things he's just very like this happened and this happened I said that it was written well and I enjoyed how it ended. I really liked the male point of view. I enjoyed the male character but thought he deserved better. That's right because the woman she wasn't my favorite person. She wasn't the nicest at times and the main male character was such a golden retriever like he was just the sweetest human being. The female character was a bit unlikable. I said I think she played too much with people's feelings and has a characteristic that I don't like which again is a cheating trope. That I said it was an adult romance, not too much plot but I also didn't mind and it was under 300 pages so a quick read but it was long chapters which if you're trying to like binge books having long chapters is not the most ideal thing in the world. That's why I didn't end up keeping it on my shelf. So next up we have another non-fiction book. So this one you can technically buy at Christian stores but I feel like it is definitely more of a non-fiction book rather than a Christian non-fiction. And that one is The Five Love Languages, The Secret to Love That Lasts by Gary Chapman. I thought this was okay. I didn't necessarily think it was like the best thing in the world. I might end up selling it. I'm not quite sure. I definitely think there were some like good aspects about love languages and learning about love languages and how to communicate with your partner through their love language. Um, it's hard for Phil and I because Phil doesn't necessarily believe in the whole love languages thing. Even though I feel like it's a very prevalent thing and it shows a lot. Phil's not really the biggest fan of it. So yeah, I don't know. That I think that's also why I don't know how I feel about this book because it would be hard for me to put these things in practice or for him to speak my love language if he's not quite sure about the whole thing. If you want to learn a lot about love languages then I would definitely recommend that because it does have a lot of like descriptions about love languages and a lot of information on how to communicate via love language. Then I picked up The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. 
This book I absolutely loved. So in this book here, we are following Tiffy and Leon. We do get both of their point of views in this book, which is really fun. So Tiffy works during the day and Leon works during the night. And they basically just share a one bedroom flat, but they've never ever met. And then they start like leaving little post-its around for each other. I would also check the trigger warnings for this because there is a certain character in this book that I don't like. I would think he could be triggering for some people. This book I have never been so giggly reading a book like this book made me giggle it made me laugh it made me kick my feet loved the relationship that blossomed in this book as well and it was the first book where I feel like I really connected to the main character and I was like oh my gosh like she literally feels like me like she was a very like jokey person but serious when she needed to be she had some really good one-liners as well and she was just so funny and I loved this. The banter was fantastic. The ending was really good as well. And I just think Beth O'Leary did a fantastic job with this book. Next up, I read Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Um, this was one of the only ones in John Green's backlist that I hadn't read. And I read this really quickly. I really enjoyed this book. So our main character here, she struggled with a lot of like mental health issues. But I feel like it was a really good way to express mental health. So I think what happens in this book is that there is this billionaire guy who just completely disappears and there is a quite a big sum of money reward for anyone who has any information about what has happened. And so this girl that we are like following our main character enlists the help of her guy best friend to try and figure out what on earth has happened to this guy. But it is more like romance heavy and more focused on mental health than it is about the mystery element of this book. Like the mystery is kind of like the subplot and the main plot is like this girl with her friend and like her mental health and her learning to recognize her mental health issues but also overcome them. And I love the way that John Green describes things. Like he just writes really well. Next up we have Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. This book I enjoyed. I wouldn't say it was necessarily my most favorite book. But would I read it again? Yes. So this is a memoir of Dolly Alderton's life and she talks about everything that she knows about love from age 16 to I think about age 20 something, like late 20s or even 30. Obviously your definitions of love definitely change from age 16 to 30. Just told a lot about like some of the life experiences that she went to and how she experienced love during those times. And I enjoyed this. Like I had it as like my little non-fiction read by my bedside table. It was good. I don't necessarily think I got any advice. Then I really wanted to jump back into the world of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. So I jumped into the fifth book here, which is The Conference of the Birds. Again, I really enjoyed this story. Again, I can't really say too much about what happened in this. Then I read a library book. So I read Bad Girl Reputation by L. Kennedy. And I did not like this book. I thought it was a little bit of a waste of time. Um, I wanted to read it because it was popular from BookTok and honestly I don't understand the hype. So I said that I didn't like either main character. I preferred Harrison and Riley who were side characters. I said that the main girl treated people horribly. Um, I remember she was very like talking about people behind their back was just a really nasty person. Um, the guy was very like lust driven and anytime he would talk about how much he really wanted our main girl uh, or like how much he really liked her, it was always like physical attributes that he liked. Like it was never like her smile or her personality. It was just like the typical things that guys say when they are trying to get one thing. And I just really, just, just really not appreciate that. I said that there wasn't a lot of character growth. I didn't enjoy the relationship as it felt toxic and lusty. I said that it was a short book. It was just over 300 pages. I said that I enjoyed the brothers relationship in this book and that there wasn't really a plot. All right, now we get into some Christmassy holiday reads. So all of these books I would have talked about in my Vlogmas videos. So if you want to go a little bit more in depth, then you can go and watch those. I'll leave the playlist down below. But the first Christmassy book I read in 2023 was Love Light Farms by BK Borison. So we're following Stella and she owns a Christmas tree farm and she has like all of her friends and stuff that like work 
at the Christmas tree farm. She has entered a competition where she is trying to win a hundred grand from this influencer but she lies on the application and says that she owns it with her boyfriend to try and make it a bit more magical and make it a little bit more like Christmas spirit-esque and then she ends up being a finalist in this competition and so the influencer then has to come to this farm to have a look around and see if it is worth winning the hundred grand. Our main character Stella asks Luca who is her best friend to pretend to be her boyfriend while this influencer is there. It's kind of like a fake dating trope. I enjoyed this. I didn't think I necessarily loved it but I also feel like I enjoyed it more when I was sitting and binging the story rather than picking it up, putting it down, picking up, putting it down. So I've left it on my shelf because I want to give it another go in like a couple of festive seasons time and just sit and binge the book. At the end as well you did also get a couple of scenes from the guy's point of view as well. I thought the ending was really good. I did enjoy the Christmas tree farm aspect of it. I just wish we kind of got a little bit more like on the actual farm rather than like her just telling us that she owned a Christmas tree farm and things like that. Like you got a few scenes on the farm but I just wish we had more. There is like a little like mystery plot alongside this plot but the mystery plot is definitely like a subplot. It definitely made me feel festive and very holiday-esque. It's a little bit spicy at parts. So alongside those books my Christian non-fiction read was Crazy Busy by Kevin DeYoung. I really enjoyed this book. I got a lot out of this book. With this book I was reading like maybe one or two chapters at a time and it basically addresses hustle culture and like how our society is kind of set on being busy and views it as a good thing. It also talks about the detriments of having a busy schedule and how that can affect your walk with the Lord, how we should view busyness from a Christian standpoint. And I really got a lot from this book. It will be one that I reread as well because I tend to be a busy person. It also addresses burnout in here as well which I hit at the end of 2023. It's also quite short but it is very dense. Then I finished Trading Christmas by Debbie McComa. So this is a collection of three short festive stories. So I read two of them last year and I read the last one this year so I read Shirley, Goodness and Mercy. So we are following Greg who is a 60 year old male and he's kind of wasted his life. Um, he hasn't really done too much with it and then he ends up like in a church on Christmas Eve praying a prayer for basically some help to try and make like the last little bit of his life count. Um, so it's kind of like a coming of age story but for like a 60 year old man. Um, is this biblical? No. It was my least favourite read out of all three of the stories in here. But I didn't dislike the story but I also just didn't think it was my favourite. Um, I did read it really quickly, like I'm pretty sure it was only like over 100 pages or something, so very quick and easy to read. Very short chapters as well, and you did also get other characters points of view as well and they all like interconnect like all the characters interconnect and with all three of the stories you'd get different characters points of view and then they would all like interconnect together which was really cool. Then I finally read Let It Snow so again this is a similar concept where it is three short stories set in the same town at the same time like at Christmas time you are following three different sets of characters. Um, so we have a story written by John Green, Maureen Johnson and Lauren Miracle. Overall I really enjoyed all three of these stories here. I feel like John Green's was my favourite but again I talked about this a little bit more in Vlogmas so if you want to hear like my full thoughts on it then go check out Vlogmas. Um, in Vlogmas I also go into like the plots of every single one. I'm not going to do that just because this video is probably already really long. It's a YA Christmas read or it reads YA anyways. And for my last Christmas read of 2023 I picked up Christmas in Quincy by Devney Perry. So this one is a prequel in the Edens series and again I really enjoyed this book. I started and finished it in one day. So we're following our two main characters who are Cleo and Austin. Cleo is the daughter of a quite wealthy man and Austin is the head of his security company and Cleo decides to book a little 
trip away for Christmas by herself rather than going to like her rich father's party because um, she just really wants to get away and have a bit of time on her own but then obviously Austin gets sent to go and find her because he is like part of her dad's security company and her dad wants her home for Christmas. They are in the small town of Quincy, Montana who is like the town was basically founded by the Edens family and it made me feel really festive. I'm really happy I read this. It was really short. It was a dual POV which was really cool for a novella um, and I still feel like this had a lot of plot considering it was a novella. This series is a contemporary romance series but I think in some of the other books you do also have like a slight thriller plot line as well which is really cool. And then guys we have made it to the last book. The 55th book that I have read is Jeanette McCurdy's I'm Glad My Mum Died memoir. So this one I actually listened to as an audiobook. I'm not really an audiobooks girly but it was narrated by Jeanette McCurdy and so I was listening to it and I also had like the book open and I was just using it as if she was like dictating to me so I was kind of like going through this as she was reading it to me and I feel like that was the best way for me to really understand the emotion that she was trying to convey. I thought it was written very well. Um, it definitely is quite insightful into the world of childhood acting and how that actually mentally affects the children um, and also talks about the abuse that she went through with her mum and also learning to recognise abuse and also a lot of her struggles that she had that kind of followed along from her abuse. I would definitely check the trigger warning. I'm really thankful that she is writing because she always wanted to write and I think being able to hear her story from her voice in her words and like doing different voices and things for characters it was just so powerful um, and it is definitely the most powerful memoir that I have ever read. I also read this within two days and it's like a 300 page book because I was just so engrossed in her story and again I find it very interesting reading and learning about other people's stories and I do really enjoy reading memoirs um, but yeah this one was a difficult one to read but I am glad that I read it. So there we go guys those are all of the 55 books. I feel like this video was a long one. So if you're still here, thank you so much. Um, my reading goal for this year, for 2024, is to read 55 books. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Please make sure to turn on the notifications and check out my social media. It's always linked down below in the description box. If you guys are gonna read any of these books, after hearing me talk about them then let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books as well let me know your thoughts down below if you want to watch any more book related videos i have an entire playlist on my channel so i will leave it down below and if i can put it in the iCard i will sometimes my cards work sometimes they don't it's very hit and miss i am really excited for all of the reading that i will do this year so i think that is everything and i shall see you guys in my next video bye